Today's topic is symmetry of the odds ratio. Let's take a look at the data that we've looked at before, where we have exposure and a disease. Only here we're going to look at it slightly differently. Let's look at this as if we're able to do a prospective study, which means we're able to look forward in time like we normally would as we are living our lives. Let's just imagine hypothetically we were able to first see if study subjects who were exposed eventually got a disease or didn't get a disease. And let's also see if study subjects who were not exposed to some risk factor got a disease or didn't get a disease. For example, the disease could be hypothetically uh, perhaps some kind of respiratory infection. And the exposure could be hypothetically supplementing vitamin D or hypothetically having a vitamin D deficiency or getting at least three hours of sunlight per week during April. Hypothetically, it could even be uh, being overweight or being underweight, having high cholesterol, having low cholesterol, anything really. But the point is the exposure variable is a yes, no, and the disease is a yes, no. So we have four uh, possibilities, and we're gonna use A, B, C, and D instead of actual numbers, because the formula is really simple for the odds ratio. Um, and we're gonna go through that. So here the marginal total is a, the, the first row marginal is A plus B. The second row marginal is C plus D. The first column marginal is A plus D and the second column marginal is B plus D. So here is our data. And let's look at the, let's make some notation first. Let's define the odds of randomly selecting a study subject who was exposed to the risk factor, whatever we're studying, given that we know he or she ultimately got the disease. So this vertical bar over here represents the word given, and this is the odds of randomly selecting a study subject who was exposed, given, ultimately got the disease. And if we look at this, really carefully, um, this is what you would call a retrospective uh, formulation because we're first saying, okay, look, suppose they got the disease. And then we're going backward in time and saying, well, what's the probability they got exposed? That is called a retrospective formulation. So, Let's look at this. Let's look at the odds of randomly selecting a study subject who was exposed, given that we know he or she actually got the disease. So if you look at that, given that he or she got the disease, we're only looking at the people who got the disease. So we're only look at the, looking at the disease yes column, and the odds of this is A to C. A to C. All right, pause that if you need to reflect on that, but the odds of randomly selecting a study subject who was exposed given that we know he or she eventually got the disease, well, that's A to C. Let's compare that to the odds of randomly selecting a study subject who was exposed given that we know they never got the disease. That would be, so if disease is no, that would be B to D, B to D. Now, when you take A to C and you divide it by B to D, this compound denominator gets inverted and multiplied. So basically you flip it. So this is A over C times D over B, which is AD over BC. And if you look at that, this is A times D divided by B times C. And it's kind of like you're going across. And the odds ratio is sometimes called the cross product ratio. For that very reason, it's like A times D divided by B times C. All right, 
So I want you to make some kind of conscious acknowledgement here that that's what we get when we look at the retrospective formulation. Now, I want to look now at a prospective formulation. Prospective means we're looking forward. So we're saying, look, what would be the odds of randomly selecting a study subject who eventually got the disease, given that they were exposed? See, we're looking at the probability of something happening in the, in the actual order that it would happen. See, first the person is exposed, then the person either gets the disease or doesn't. This is the actual order that it would happen in the real world. This is a prospective formulation. You could do this if you were doing a prospective study. Like, let's say you gave a group of uh, randomly selected college students vitamin D supplementation, and then you waited around to see if they got a certain respiratory infection, right? You could do the same thing with, with placebo vitamin D supplementation. You give a randomly selected group of uh, college students a placebo. And then you wait around to see if they get some kind of disease, like let's say a, a respiratory infection, right? Okay, so this is a prospective formulation. So now let's look at these odds. Let's look at the conditional odds of randomly selecting a study subject who got the disease given that he or she was exposed. Now we're only looking at the exposure row, and that would be A to B. And given no exposure would be C to D. And that's how we get this nice little compound fraction over here. This is A to B divided by C to D. So let's actually do the the inverting and multiplying. So we have A to B times D to C because we have to invert and multiply the denominator. And look what we get. We get AD divided by BC. We get the same formula for the odds ratio. Whether we have a retrospective formulation where we first look at disease status, and then we do a fishing expedition for exposure variables, or whether we have a prospective formulation where we might randomly assign uh, exposure, let's say, to vitamin D supplementation versus a placebo, and then we raid around to see if they get the, inf the respiratory infection or not. We get the same answer either way. That's remarkable. That works with odds, and I have to say very clearly, that will not work with probability. And this is called the symmetry property of the odds ratio, or it could just be said the symmetry of the odds ratio. Now, of course, you know, when we're dividing, you know, we can't have zero in the denominator. So, of course, B can't be equal to zero and C can't be equal to zero, but this is, you know, basic stats, you know, so of course this is not going to be the case, but nevertheless, it should be said. So the point here is that the odds ratio, whether you're looking at it retrospectively, where first you have, say, cases and controls, and then you go on a fishing expedition for exposure variables, or whether you do it prospectively, whether, say, we, we look to see if they get the disease given exposure and no exposure, we're going to get the same odds ratio. And it's always going to be A times D divided by B times C, always, either way. This is called symmetry of the odds ratio. And it's a fundamental idea because this gives us the intellectual justification for using the odds ratio as a measure of association in retrospective studies. So I want to write this down. So this is the justification. Justification. Did I spell that right? J-U-S-T-I-F-I-C. Justification for using the odds ratio as a measure of association
in retrospective studies. So if you see the odds ratio, chances are it is a retrospective study, even though you could use it in prospective studies. Very few people do. But the relative risk can only be used in prospective studies because the relative risk lacks this symmetry. Very important. If you've enjoyed this video um, or you found it useful in any way, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. Um, if there was something about this video you don't like, shoot me a comment and I'll try to make it better. Thank you.